and see there are many other crazy people like ourselves and uh, I think we do the right thing. Um, we as a group have already arrived in the new age, in the third millennium and the atmosphere is more about cooperation, appreciation, uh, open source, helping each other and uh, I think this is the only way to go to the future. So what I'm talking about is about uh, storytelling. Ten years ago I sat together with a friend, Mark Röbel, and uh, I don't know how this idea came, but shall we make a podcast? Yes, we do a podcast. And he, at that time, has been dri uh, driving electric cars for many years, and ten years ago electric cars were as exotic as soda cocas are still today, and so the small community in Germany knew each other. And uh, he knew the protagonists there, and uh, I had built my first soda coca in 2008, and somehow I came in the situation to organize my first uh, soda cooking conference in 2009, and so I was also already in touch with the German solar cooking community, and so the idea of Sunpot, of our podcast, was uh, to let the main actors, so the main um, protagonists, tell their own stories with their, with their own words. And this is uh, what we do uh, until today, but very soon, and from the first year, we opened the range of topics and Actually, we had much more interviews about other stuff than solar cooking and electric cars, um, but we always come back to our roots. And uh, as Pat already said, um, in the last few days I was also um, allowed to record five more interviews and I hope I will have the opportunity after the conference to add some more. I have already published 43 interviews about solar cooking half of them round about in English and half in German. And um, to give you an impression uh, how it works, I play the first example. So, um, okay. we, should hear, we should hear something now. Right now. Ah, technology, techniques. <laughs> We have not made any test.
is uh, Segarin. Um, I was christened Tilgenata and Segarin, but everybody calls me Segi Segarin. Yes. So I was born in Sri Lanka in um, 57 and lived in Sri Lanka till I was 14. Um, due to the civil strife in Sri Lanka, my father immigrated to Nigeria to work. And from the age of 14 to 18, I studied in Nigeria. Uh, came to the UK to a degree in engineering, specializing in electronics. Uh, finished in 1979. And uh, I worked in electronics, uh, managing teams, designing products, till I was, uh, till last year, when I was nearly 60. Uh, when I was lucky enough to take uh, uh, a step back from uh, the business and devote some time to some of my early passions but not been able to devote time to before. Um, one of them being um, solar cooking. Um, so in, in, in uh, digging into that, uh, I've of course learned about retail heat cooking and uh, rocket stoves. So these are the sort of three areas that I'm concentrating in, particularly wanting to promote their use in Sri Lanka and other developing countries to help deforestation, save energy and save money for low income uh, uh, people in, living in these countries. I always ask my interview partners to give a short self-introduction in the beginning, and this was the one with Sagi Sagarin. I um, was lucky to record this uh, one and a half years ago. I was in, in the UK, in, in England. There was a so-called Green Gathering. I would call it a Love and Peace Festival, um, esoteric and uh, ecologic, and uh, I wanted to support uh, Dave Oxford and Stuart McLachlan, who are busily trying to convince uh, the English people that solar cooking is a good thing, and uh, I was one more voice there to talk to the people, and uh, it was five days, I, I think, and in between, Sagi and his wife came there and uh, presented uh, his prototype of a hybrid electric box cooker. And I was so fascinated that I asked him, uh, have you a quarter of an hour for me to uh, tell me your story? And I'm very happy that he decided to come and join us and tomorrow he will tell, uh, in his presentation, he will tell his story. Okay, next. This is how it looks uh, on our website. It is just a WordPress blog, and there is uh, always the picture of the uh, interview partner, and a link below is the link to the MP3 file where you can hear the whole interview. And then below is a little bit of text, uh, it gives a short overview. It is all in German, and, and uh, below is a short English text and a short introduction. And uh, so you know um, what you have to expect when you want to listen to it. And I don't know if one can see it. It was episode number 239. But uh, I said we have only 43 solar cooking interviews. And I think somewhere in the 30s, the electric car interviews. So the big amount, the, the, the majority of the interviews are about other stuff. Uh, mainly in the field, if you know the transition town movement, it comes from this direction. Um, transformative uh, approaches in any kind. New money, uh, um, new ways of agriculture, and so on. Okay, then um, my very first interview I really did, uh, next one, um, was with Wolfgang Schäffler. In 2010, uh, I was a member of a group. We had organized a conference in Düsseldorf, where I live. Uh, it was called Solar Energy for Africa, and Wolfgang was one of the speakers. And as I said, uh, I had organized a conference one year before, 2009, uh, in the so-called, in German, the Ratzentrum Mecklenburg-Vorpommern, in the solar center in the north of Germany, near the Baltic Sea. And I had already invited Wolfgang and his wife Heike uh, as speakers there, so I knew him. Uh, but at that time, we had not started our podcast yet. And when he was in Düsseldorf, I asked him, can we make an interview? And I mean, 
it felt a little bit like um, you make a new, new football team and the first team you play with is FC Liverpool or so. Yeah? Wolfgang Scheffler was one of my super gurus and I learned and it, it happened again and again and again with others that everybody is very approachable and friendly and open and it, it was fantastic. And uh, I had two interviews with him. Uh, the second one was more in detail about his cookers some years later. Um, and the second one was with Jo Hasler. He has invented the Lazola box cooker. Uh, and uh, in, the, in the end, uh, after some years, I had three interviews with him. Um, where he really in detail explains and uh, everything about, uh, I mean, every thought you can have about box cookers, he already had. And if you imagine any question you can put him, he says, yes, I thought about it and I have five different answers and we do it this way and not this way because of any reason. It's amazing. He is Mr. Box Cooker for me. Today, and when we recorded this interview, he was 79, now he is 89. I visited him four weeks ago in, in Paderborn, where he lives, in, in uh, two hours from Düsseldorf, round about, and he is still brilliant. His short time memory is not so good anymore, but uh, it is a joy to speak with him. Yes. <laughs> okay, we go on. Um, I don't, uh, this is, uh, uh, for those of you who don't know the cookers he invented, uh, we, the Lazola has, uh, there are two sizes, uh, Lazola small and wide, LS and LW, um, and we have an LS outside uh, on the yard. If you didn't see it, watch it. It is uh, built for eternity, I would say, very stable, very durable, and uh, for me it is the, the, the materialized idea of a box cooker, I would say. Yes, next. <clears throat> yes, normally I only take pictures of the uh, uh, interview partners and not myself, but in this case I did not know it. I was at a United Nations conference in Bonn, our former capital, uh, because I wanted to record an interview with Bandana Shiva, uh, you know, the, the um, awardee of the Alternative Nobel Prize. and. The one who made the contact with me was also a friend of Deepak Gadia. And he said, Deepak Gadia is also here. Do you want to speak with him? And I suddenly stood uh, in front of one of my superheroes. Of course, I mean, if you start uh, dealing with uh, solar cookers uh, and you go in the internet and research it, of course you find him and you see the pictures of his uh, 50,000 people kitchen a day and uh, suddenly he was there. And then I learned he had studied in Germany. He, this interview was in German. He speaks perfectly German. And we have met several times uh, after this. Next one, please. Yeah, Hartmut Ehmler lives in Berlin, is a physicist, and he has invented the light oven. Um, maybe we go to the next picture when we see it. Um, I still use it in my garden for making hot water. Uh, at that time, it was the only reasonable lightweight uh, cooker you can fold and uh, take wherever you want. Uh, altogether, it weighs uh, 1.6 kilograms and uh, the vessel uh, contains 1.5 liters and heats it up to boiling uh, within one hour and five minutes. And it is fantastic. It, uh, I think the effective uh, Power is 160 watt. Um, yes, next. Okay, then uh, this interview with Hartmut Ehmler was recorded at the aforementioned solar center in North Germany. And every two years, there is a, the biggest German uh, solar cooking conference in Altötting in Bavaria. And um, it is around the, the man on the right side, is Dr. Dieter Scheffler. Uh, Dr. Dieter Seifert, who he has invented uh, many parabolic cookers, especially uh, the most famous is the SK-14. And on the left side is his wife Emma, and when he makes, present when he makes presentations, he always says she is as important as I am, because every time I made a change, she cooked with the cooker and said, this is okay, and you must change this. 
and I think she is one of the most experienced solar cookers on this planet. Uh, and it is a joy to meet the two of them. And uh, because he said so, no, no, no. Uh, because he said so, um, it was clear that I would make an interview with the two of them together. And uh, you can hear them. It is also a German. And at the same conference in the middle of the guy is Hans Michel Bauer. There is an organization, an NGO in Altötting in Bavaria, uh, the EG Solar, EG Solar, uh, around this coca mainly, and they have produced construction kits uh, for shipping mainly to Africa, and meanwhile they are, have built more than 40,000 of them and, and distributed them. Okay, and now we have heard uh, the names of the two places in Germany, the Solar Center in the north and Altötting in the south. We are now here in Faro in the left corner on the ground and the right spot is where I live in Düsseldorf. It is uh, in the far west of Germany, not far from the Dutch border. Um, and um, these conferences in these three places are the best opportunities for me to collect these interviews because I don't have the money to travel around the globe and, and find or visit all these people. And in these three places um, I have recorded uh, almost half of my interviews. Uh, I have a small, next please, uh, for those of you who like Excel graphics, I have this one. I record, uh, published 17 interviews I recorded here in Faro, uh, eight from Altötting and seven from the Solar Center and the rest from different places. Okay? Yeah, then uh, in uh, 2014 I was invited by an NGO to Winterthur. It's uh, not far from Zurich in Switzerland and um, because uh, I make workshops uh, building uh, cardboard cookers, uh, funnel cookers, and there was an NGO with projects in Gambia and they wanted uh, to attract more people to their booth there. And on the same market was ADES. It's an organization uh, that was created by Regula Oxner and her organization is the worldwide biggest privately financed uh, NGO uh, in the field of solar cooking. She has, um, I think, eight uh, workshops on Madagascar. It is completely focused on Madagascar. It began as a project, a project for reforestation because more than 90% or 95% or so of this huge island is completely deforestated. The whole forest is destroyed and she wanted to do something against it and uh, in the end she landed uh, in the field of solar cooking and she collects every year between two and three million Swiss francs uh, for funding that uh, her project. Um, they produce the cookers, normally box cookers, uh, and in the last years also wood, uh, uh, made of clay or something, ceramic, um, uh, wood saving stoves, and uh, distribute them below the production costs. And for this she goes uh, fundraising every year in Switzerland. Next, so all these interviews uh, I showed you so far were in German, and then in 2015 I received an email and uh, we had email contact before, and Celestino said I will be in Frankfurt, in Germany. Um, there is a fair I need to, to go to. Have you any possibility to go there? And it is two hours from Düsseldorf roundabout, and that was the first time we met, together with Bernhard Müller, who lives uh, in the neighbor town of Frankfurt. And this meeting uh, was the beginning of this Consul Food Conference. Um, the story is too long uh, to tell you now, but um, this was my first English language solar cooking interview. Um, and um, one question I wanted to ask was, uh, next picture, uh, everybody knows it. If you haven't seen it here, maybe you have seen it on the internet before, and I wanted to know 
uh, why do you use concrete as a material? Next. The concrete because it's a uh, common material. Uh, To, to have a permanent uh, resistance, resistance to cooker, yeah. to, to rain, to yeah. wind, okay. and uh, mm -hmm. that could be easily to be cleaned. Yeah. So in some rural areas, I think uh, this kind of uh, characteristics mm -hmm. are very, very important. Yeah. 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 This led uh, um, three, three uh, quarters, uh, no nine months later to the first uh, Consul Ford Conference here in Faro and there I met a lot of uh, wonderful people. Uh, first one is Joanna Walter McGilligan from India. Deepak was, was also Deepak Gadia was also a member of the committee and he came here and uh, brought a lot of wonderful people with him. One was uh, she. Um, I don't know, some of you have been here and I know it, but um, for the others, uh, she has, uh, she runs a center for educating um, homeless or young women in uh, central India, in Indore, uh, who have no other chance to get educated and they learn everything there uh, for running a household and gardening and uh, also using soda cocos, that was the uh, reason why she came here. And uh, this is about 40 minutes or so. I never ha had heard about her before, but uh, after this interview, <coughs> yes, <laughs> I, I was speechless. Uh, it is really impressive. Then um, Andy Bettina and, and Ellen Bigelow were here, two thirds of Solar Punch, the solar powered brand. They use music for promoting um, solar cooking. Anjan Luki uh, is the first entrepreneur in um, India who has a 100% renewable company. He says uh, his ingredients are fruit, sugar and pectin and he makes everything you can imagine about this. It is jam and uh, sweet uh, all kinds of sweets and uh, marmalades, jams, uh, juices and so on. He has 10 uh, shuffle dishes on his rooftop and for the two months where he has no sunshine, he uses biogas. And uh, Dave Oxford and Stuart McLachlan uh, introduced uh, us into the world of uh, unbreakable or <laughs> more or less uh, vacuum tube cookers. And uh, the, I forgot to take a picture of these two, and at uh, Celestino's birthday party, uh, I only found this picture, and um, uh, together with Caitlin, she, she's also, yeah, <laughs> okay, uh, so, uh, and we, I think we will hear her later, okay. So, yeah, Julie Green was then her predecessor uh, at Solar Cocas International and um, Pedro Serrano from Chile spoke about solar restaurants in, in Chile and uh, Crosby Menzies from South Africa uh, is uh, heavily promoting solar cooking there and uh, seems to be very successful. Then, um, after having already two interviews with Hartmut Emler and after this experience with this conference here, I thought um, the, the podcast, uh, the, the solar cooking part of it, goes in this, uh, opens to the world. I have now several English interviews and I think his cooker is so important that he should tell his story in English. And I met him again in the solar center and uh, asked him and uh, we did this interview in English and uh, if you are interested in the light open story uh, you can go there. Hmm? And this is how it looks, light open 3, it looks a little bit different uh, but uh, has some new qualities and um, you can listen to it and then you will find out. The conference in the solar center next is on 15th of May. Um, Always is on Fridays, there are the presentations, and on Saturday, normally uh, in the morning we have the 
one or the other workshop and in the afternoon we go to the beach and normally we have a lot of cocas with us and uh, yeah, uh, surprise uh, the other people there on the beach. <laughs> okay. Yeah, then uh, Deepak brought two young women with him uh, last time, 2018. They are social workers in rural India and um, they do projects where they, they told me that uh, depending on where they go, first they learn the language of this area and now they know five or so different Indian languages in addition to uh, English, and I don't know if they speak French, they are geniuses in, in, in terms of language. <laughs> and in, in many other respects, I, I would say so too. And um, for those of you who are too much in love with their own technology, and uh, I mean, we know that 90% or more of all solar cooking projects in the last 30 years failed, and they have the recipe what to do to make it work. Hmm? something fantastic here, is it is, take it, uh, uh, you, uh, I guarantee you it doesn't work. Next please, yeah, there were some other people, uh, I uh, was lucky to interview at the sec uh, second consul fort, uh, Daniel Müller and Jürgen Kleinwächter, um, maybe some of you saw them in uh, yesterday when we were in Chamera and they spoke about this uh, big concentrator, this big uh, trapper like uh, mirror. The Solar Sisters were here and they are here today. Luckily, they try to promote solar cooking in Ohio and I think they do it very successfully. Sadie Bischkopf from Denmark presented the foil, the Fennel foils, and uh, I uh, invited her to our next conference, uh, as I said, on May 15th in Vito in the Solar Center. Uh, she left. Um, Heliak uh, in between, and she is now working on some new type of box cooker and mass storage system, I think. And Pierre-André Aubert was here and, uh, and, and and also in this interview spoke about his plans to open a solar restaurant in Marseille, and I'm in contact with him via Facebook, and uh, he already opened, now he is running. Okay? And uh, yeah, Isabella Troconis uh, had written a master work about um, a failed solar cooking project in Burkina Faso. Sharon, uh, she is one of those who represent this new spirit of the new age in a perfect way because he is success, uh, successful in her business, but she gives the plans of uh, uh, Copenhagen Cooker free to everybody. It is open source and I think this is the way to go. Thank you very much for this. And uh, yes, then Ellen Bigelow presented us the PEP test, which, which was new uh, two years ago of Solar Cookers International. And Raga the Ostele are a wonderful man from India, one of those wonderful people Deepak brought us here. He dropped his career as a uh, pilot in order to help people in the rural uh, area in India and is specialized in uh, solar drying and meanwhile, um, and we will hear him in the next days, um, he has started a business in the field of solar drying. He is preparing Indian Triforce now. I'm just gonna so next uh, is um, from Mexico, from Mexico, Juana. 
Um, I wanted also to have a contribution about solar drying and the, she is an engineer in the field of solar drying and made this presentation about this, they dry trees and um, yeah, blah, blah. this is the last uh, piece we okay. hear. I'm, I'm Juan Maria Hernandez Carquín, I am from Chiapas, Mexico and I used to be a renewable energy engineer. After that, I studied a uh, master in uh, sustainable energy development, and I really like to work in solar. I mean, every uh, all the renewable energies are very important, but I, I am working in solar pipes since some years ago, and and I we developed with some friends some some uh, work with solar like uh, solar dryers. Most of my work work is in solar dryers. And uh, we develop a sort of dryer for cheese. And uh, this technology is good because it's very uh, one with the people because this these people was uh, making cheese and now they have a chance to dry it. The cheese is one of the most important products in my state. So uh, the people also dry it within a natural way. But this method is the, so takes so long time. And with the solar drive, they, they reduce the time to the half of the time, mm -hmm. and also they, they do it in an easier way, so it's very easier for them, and then, and then uh, they are growing. Because this cheese is, is like a storage, the product, and then they can sell it when they, they want. Okay, next. Okay. So I have uh, published 43 interviews so far. 22 in English, 21 in German. Uh, I already was able to record five more uh, in the last days, um, and they will be published in the coming weeks. And I hope I will have the chance to record a few more after the conference. I have my home on Monday, so if anybody is willing to tell me a story, please come to me and we make an appointment.